I have a very clear memory of the very first time I laid eyes on the Fugard. It was a construction site, probably halfway through or three quarters of the way through its build. And uh, I remember calling my folks and saying, this is a space that I want to be involved with. In 2010, in November 2010, I got a call from Eric asking if I'd come in and take over as the GM. To be honest, when I got the phone call, I thought it was to help Eric sell off the assets and help him close the theater. I wasn't expecting him to ask me to be the GM. And what it entailed initially was to really set the, the ship back on course. I was young when I took over, I was only 30, but I had had 10 years of theater management experience before then. And the team that I appointed also happened to be young full of energy, full of passion, not afraid of working 16 hours a day, which is what a lot of those early days was. I get this phone call from Daniel Galloway, Sticks, and he says to me, Lamise, what's basically happened is I'm going to become the GM at the Fugard, and I get to pick three people to come on board, and I need you to come on board. I was young. I mean, I'd, I'd never had a permanent job. I would I didn't even know it was going to become a permanent job. It was incredibly scary but so flippin' exciting. I mean we were working things out that nobody had done in the country in terms of theatrical stuff. We were kind of making it up as we go along. Eric, Daniel and Lamise were really the people that spearheaded those early years. When I came out of the bar into production manager and associate producer, I joined that and then became part of that unit. I feel like it's one of my proudest achievements at the Fugo finding those people, putting them together, and challenging them to create the best possible thing they could possibly do. I remember being so excited as producer at the Fugard in 2010. I mean, we had everything before us, and it was an opportunity for us to really produce world-class theater. Daniel, with his incredible, positive, attitude, always ready with a smile, always fast on his feet, nothing is ever impossible. Lamise with her absolute determination and being sort of a powerhouse uh, producer would never see a problem and always had time for an actor or a creative and it would go above and beyond. After hours, all hours, the bulk of the success of the Fugard really sits with them. What we lacked in experience, we, we had an enthusiasm. And in Eric, we had somebody who was willing to tolerate the mistakes and to help us along and to guide us along as we needed to be. He had a vision and a mission uh, that he wanted to accomplish with the Fugard, which was, let's create a world-class space that presents world-class work. But also to, to bring a community in, to bring various communities in. Which was something that was always at the core of what we did at the Fugard. And I think it's what kind of set us apart a little bit. I, I know that, that actors would always stop me on the street or come and see me and say, you know, it, it's so aspirational to get a Fugard contract. It's such a pleasure to work at the Fugard. There'd been two inherited events, one production and one event, that we had to take over. Boom, here you go, first challenge, go for it. I inherited uh, the Captain Satir, which was the very first production I, I produced. Uh, Janice Honeyman directed the translation of Athel's play, and then uh, Broken Glass with Sir uh, Anthony Scher. And the productions just started lining up. I mean, Daniel did a great job in just lining up these productions one after the other. So Ian McKellen came over to the Fugard Theatre in his production of Waiting for Godot, Sean Mathias directed, which was kind of the first star production that the Fugard uh, brought in from overseas. Enormous opportunity for audiences locally, and, and that kind of set the course. We were moving. We were moving at a pace, and we were unhindered by obstacles that might exist in other theatres. All of these little international tidbits made people both locally and internationally sit up and take notice uh, of this theatre that seemed to be punching way above its weight category so early on in its life. Um, but what, what happened was, as we went further on into it, is that we, we landed up being more and more fiercely determined to present South African work. Our first big musical was Cat and the Kings, David and Talib's Cat and the Kings. I was very excited that we uh, now had an opportunity 
to bring a District 6 story right back into what was the old District 6. David Kramer comes in and we're like, oh my goodness, this is actually happening. First musical, you kind of don't really know, you've never really done a musical before. Also, this, this particular musical is a legend in your life and in your family's life. It was just really a great way of, of starting out at the Fugard Theatre with a District 6 story in a, in a new District 6 theatre in an old District 6 building. Cut Diamond, who you know, grows up on the streets of District 6, would have walked past uh, the building you know, on a daily basis. Talib was no longer with us. It would have been uh, you know, kind of a, a, a childhood dream for him come true. The way everyone bought into it, and when I say everyone, I mean Cape Town at the time, bought into us recreating this product with David Kramer was incredible. For me, it was very special being in District 6 because my um, grandmother was from District 6 and my mother grew up in District 6. It was a, a special place where people of all races and creeds and color came together and lived in harmony. This is where this is going to happen again. People of all creeds and color are going to get together again and sit next to one another and enjoy theater. Uh, I remember walking out uh, on, the, uh, on the final curtain call of the very first performance of Cat and the Kings and I called Eric and I said to him, we have a hit and I think it's going to run for a long time. Children brought the grannies and, the, and their parents to come and see um, David Kramer's productions. And these are people that lived in District 6. We had planned to, to run it for 10 weeks. 10 weeks is a long time to run a musical in South Africa. Well, it was back then in any event. Uh, Cat and the Kings landed up doing two seasons in Cape Town, two seasons in Johannesburg, playing to 65,000 people over, over the 10 month or 12 month period that it ran for. It was just kind of unstoppable. I'd like to think that the, that the Fugard became known for quality musical theater. And to kick it off with David and Talib's Cat and the Kings was just a, a dream for me. Cat and the Kings was the first of many David Kramer collaborations that the Fugard Theater would undertake over the years. Uh, the commissioning of his new Orpheus in Africa, uh, District 6 Canala. Um, these, the, these were works that were very important for our local theatre going audiences and it, and it um, encouraged and enabled work for South African performers who might otherwise not have had that work. I was now freed from the responsibility of producing and um, found myself with a team, a production team, uh, and with a budget. Uh, which was quite generous. I loved, I loved working in the space. The, the, the people working in the theater at all levels um, were hugely uh, enthusiastic and, and, and focused uh, on bringing the stories to the stage. It was always a joy. One of the things that, that came through the Kramer co uh, collaboration and all the other musicals we did was us employing thousands of local people to, to work uh, in, these, in these theatrical productions. The Fugard, I mean, by comparison to other theatres, was a very, very small theatre. 320 seats, 120 seats in the studio. The volume of productions that the Fugard did was quite high. Um, I mean, we worked really, really hard, um, especially in that middle period. And out of that came this incredible network of suppliers. It created this ecosystem within the South African theater industry. And then what started to happen is those people would start to work with other producers because they'd be like, oh, who did that work? And I mean, and that's still happening today. The sheer amount of work that they produced with the team and with the various creative teams was staggering. Mm -hmm. 